Hello and good morning everybody. What is up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be talking about Bradley John Murdoch. If you don't know who he is, the cases he's involved with in influence the movie Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek is very good. Highly recommend and I hope you enjoy it. Anywho, so who is Bradley John Murdoch? We're going to Australia today. So he was born on the 19th of February of 1958. And he was born in Northampton, which is in Western Australia. Um, so he is currently serving a life sentence. And this is for the 2001 murder of an English backpacker. And his name is Peter Falconio, Falconio um, in Australia. Now... Bradley John Murdoch will be 74 when he's eligible for parole in 2032, so 10 years from now. Um, he is being held at the Darwin Correctional Center in Darwin, North Territory. He has applied to appeals against his conviction, but both have been unsuccessful. And they refuse a special leave um, to appeal on the 21st of June 2007, and he is forbidden to talk to the press when it comes to this case forbidden. So he was convicted of murder, um, deprivation of liberty, and aggravated unlawful assault. So, okay, he was born to Colin and Nancy Murdoch. His dad was a mechanic and his mother was a hairdresser. He was an unexpected child because his siblings were 11 and 14 at the time, so he was a whoopsie. Um, the family lived in Northampton he, before moving to Perth when he was 12. Now, he had, adjusting, he had problems adjusting to city life, and he soon became involved in a biker game. So at the age of 15, he left high school and he moved to Geraldton. Um, this is where he became involved with the biker gang's criminal activities. He also started his own trucking business and he declared bankruptcy in 1983. Fun. Um, in 1980, however, he met his partner. Her name is Diane, um, whom he married in July of 1984. And they also had a child together. But they separated in 1986 due to domestic violence. Um, he then was employed as a truck driver and he was also an illicit drug smuggler as well and admitted in court to smuggling large amounts of cannabis across Australia. Um, he also began to display white supremacist tendencies. Um, so this was in the wake of the Mabo decision of 1992. The Mabo decision was a decision that was brought by Eddie Mabo against the state of Queensland. And it's the recognition of pre-colonial land interests of indigenous Australians. So it was just basically drawing lines down with people. Um, he also had a racial tattoo as well. So by 1988, after being released from prison, he was living in Derby, running drugs, driving road trains, and he resettled in Broome, and he was running drugs to Sedan. So his previous convictions were when he was 21, he had a suspended sentence after being convicted of causing death by dangerous driving. This is after he hit a motorcyclist um, in November of 1995. So that first one was in 1980. So in 1995, he started a 21 month sentence after drunkenly shooting at people who was celebrating the indigenous Australian like rules football final match. And this is in the Kimberley region of Western Australia. He was released after 15 months. Um, in 2003, he was charged in with seven counts of abduction and rape, but was acquitted of the charges. So, so. Let's talk about Peter Falconio. So, Peter Falconio was a British tourist who went missing um, on part of Stewart Highway in Barrow Creek. Um, this is in the Northern Territory of Australia on the evening of the 14th of July of 2001. And he was traveling with his girlfriend, Joanne Lees. So this case quickly attracted public and legal attention, both domestically in Australia and worldwide. 
Falconio was only 28 at the time of his disappearance, and his body has never been found, and he is pres presumed dead. So, on the 13th of December of 2005, this is when Bradley Murdoch is convicted of the murder and sentenced to life. So, Lees and Falconio met in 1996 they started a relationship and after they met when they were at a local nightclub so she began living with him in the following year in brighton england and he was studying at brighton university so in 2000 this is when they embark on a trip in nepal singapore malaysia thailand cambodia and australia um even though there was recent news of backpacker murders. So um, I think it's called the Port Arthur Massacre. And then the Childers Place Backpackers Hostel Fire. Um, this made their families anxious about the final leg of their trip. But the couple arrived in Sydney on a working holiday visa. Um, and on the 25th of June, they departed on a road trip planned from Sydney to Canberra, Melbourne, Adelaide, Darwin, and Brisbane. So at about 7.30 on the night of the 14th of July of 2001, this is when Falconio and Lees are traveling on Stewart Highway, bound for Devil's Marbles in their orange combi, which the combi is a Volkswagen bus. Um, so they... Falconio was driving, Lees was sitting next to him, and the two had been very conscious that a car was following them since they stopped at a roadhouse in Barrow Creek, and it w they were expecting to be overtaken. However, when the vehicle, which was a white Toyota um, with a green canopy, it was a four-wheel drive, drew alongside the van, the driver gestured them to pull over. Falconio stopped the van and went to speak with him, who had pulled off the road ahead of them. The man explained that he saw sparks shooting out of the exhaust. So as the two went to the rear of the vehicle, Lees moved in the driver's seat, ready to rev the engine. This is when she heard a loud bang at the rear of the van. Moments later is when they see she sees him holding the handgun and brandishing it. Um, he then climbed into the van. Lees let him secure her hands behind her back with black cable ties and, um, even though she fought the tying of her feet and like taping of her mouth. She was then dragged to the Toyota and she, this is when she notices his dog. Um, but fearing that she was to be raped, she managed to flee into a bush while he was distracted. And she, they believe this is when he was moving Falconio's body. Um, he then searched for Lee's before leaving and passing nearby three times. She hid until she flagged down a road train driver at about 12.35 a.m. And him, who with him at the time, his co-worker, took her back to Barrow Creek. So the investigation was called around 1.30, and they arrived to collect evidence. The testimonies are about around 4.20 a.m. Um, this is when they were accompanied by the same road train driver. Um, in the search for Falconio, the Toyota, and the gunman, commenced at 7 a.m. They returned to the scene. They found a dirt-covered pool of blood. The couple's combi hidden 80, mi like 80 meters into the, like, into the area where they were. Um, it was not until eight hours later that the rescue, that roadblocks were put in place on 12 roads exiting the district. Police searched the area for the following months and revealed little except for her footprints. Um, there were trackers that arrived at a nearby settlement within a few days, but none of them found any evidence. Um, so given the unusual nature of this attack and the lack of corroborating evidence, it took police only a few days to appreciate the significance of this crime. Um, but in the wake of the backpacker cases of China and like the different things that were going on, the media was quick to sensationalize Lee's story as one of the survival of a crime of an unusual horror against them. However, there was inconsistencies in her statement. Her demeanor the following week shifted the attention um, because of her version of offense, like the facial composite, the vehicle type, the dog, the CCTV footage um, of the suspect at the service station in Alice Springs. Um, it's similar to what happened in the Azaria Chamberlain case, which I think that's another case that I'm going to cover, but I don't really know. Um, 
it's on my list, but um, there was a reward that was released. It was $250,000 um, that was posted, but the only new evidence in the Falconio case was an unidentified male's DNA trace on Lee's shirt and some related DNA on the cable ties and the Combi gear stick. So police were hopeful with the release of the CCTV footage um, that this person coming forward to remove themselves, like they hoped they would come forward. Um, when this didn't happen, investigators began to focus their thoughts on registered owners of 1991 to 1999 Toyota Land Cruiser four-wheel drives um, and to identify them. Uh, so there was 36 men who had been identified via the footage. Um, based on these results, police interviewed Bradley John Murdoch in Broom on the 1st of November of 2001. Um, though Lee's description didn't immediately connect him to the case, no DNA, DNA sample was ever collected. So on the 17th of May of 2002, investigators caught Murdoch's accomplice for the drug running and began to relate details of his connection to the case. Um, a DNA examination of Murdoch's brother supported his involvement. Uh, Murdoch then disappeared, but on the 22nd of August of 2002, he was arrested and tried on an unrelated kidnap and assault charge. So, obviously, we know he was tried. He was convicted unanimously on the 13th of December of 2005 by a jury and sentenced to life in prison with a non-parole period of 28 years. Um, he was convicted of other assault-related charges on Lee's, and only after the sentencing was it revealed that Murdoch had previously been acquitted of aggravated sexual assault, and this was on a mother and daughter in South Australia a few years earlier. So, like I said, this crime influenced the film Wolf Creek that was released in Australia, and the film was marketed as being based on true events. So, yeah, um, there Lees also wrote a book about her life. After she went back to England, she launched the book in 2006. Um, and she's also been interviewed multiple times by BBC News. So there is a docudrama that was released in the perspective of Lees, which is called Joanne Lees, Murder in the Outback. Um, the role of them was played by Joanne Froget and Lawrence Bruls. Um, it was showed on ITV1 in the UK, which it was released in 2007, on TV1 in New Zealand, um, RTL2 in Germany, and this case was also covered by Case File, a uh, true crime podcast, on the 20th of January of 2017. So in 2002, Channel 4 in the UK broadcasted a four-part documentary series about this called Murder in the Outback, the Falconio and Lee's Mystery. So that, my friends, is today's true crime case about the murder of Peter Falconio and assaults of Joanne Lees. At the hands, at the hands of Mr. Murdoch, of Bradley John Murdoch. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys tomorrow in a brand new video. Don't forget to hit that likes button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn your bell notification on all. That way you know when I upload. And if you have a true crime case you want me to cover, put it down below. I'll add it to my list and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.